gorillas are like bears for Catherine. Unless it is a purposeful thing that we are hiking to see, we are not going to see them if she is with you. Okay. If, if you guys have not been longtime listeners of the podcast, Chris says that I like deter bears somehow. You I have are a never, bear curse. I have literally never seen a bear in the wild. Hello and welcome to the Worldwide Honeymoon Travel Podcast, the podcast that talks about all things couples travel, including destinations, tips, advice, and more. I'm Chris. I'm Kat. And this is episode number 191. Yikes. <laughs> this is, we're getting up there. What? Oh. An age. I thought that was like a reflection on my intro. Oh, and no. I was like, I realized that like I'm still developing my radio voice, but <laughs> okay. uh, but I didn't think it warranted a yikes. <laughs> no, uh, we're recording this on Halloween. Yay. Well, I mean, it'll be like way past Halloween by the time it's live, but just uh, an FYI, nice Halloween day, ate a lot of candy. You did? Yeah. What candy did you eat? Uh, pretty much the rest of the mini peanut butter cups. And the rest of the mini Kit Kats? Uh, that was yesterday. Do we, I we polish have, those off? Do you, I only have Almond Joys left? I ate one Almond Joy today, because, but then I quickly remembered what a trash candy it is. All right. <laughs> let me just, let me delve into this for a while. Um, is the issue the almond? Like, do you like mounds? Or is it? It's the coconut thing. You I don't think. like anything coconut? No, no. I love coconut. Okay. But I don't like... This ought to be good. It's like mushy and weird. Like I like almonds. I love chocolate covered almonds. Do you I, like bananas? Yeah. Those are mushy and weird. Okay. But they're much better than coconut. Like coconut. I don't mind like the desiccated coconut that goes in things like in smoothies or like coconut ice cream or whatever. But when it's like mushy coconut, it's weird. I don't know. It's not I that love, good of a flavor, too. I love almond joys and mounds. I know you're. This you was like a the polarizing. Candies. This was a polarizing candy in our um in our group chat this weekend. I found out that two other people also like almond joys slash mounds. It is such a good one of my uh, one of my buddies texted me this morning, and he said he was like unbelievable listening to the radio, and they say, "Oh, call in with your favorite candy." And what did the first person who call in say? Almond Joy. Oh, gross! Get out of here! <laughs> All right, what are your what are your top three candies that just like automatically come to mind? Um, Kit Kat, obviously. Okay. Um, peanut butter cups. Reese's. Yeah. Okay. And Twix. Ooh, Twix is good. Yeah. Like, I do like Twix. Easy chocolate girl. I'm a soft cheese and a chocolate gal. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> um. Mine are, I'm going to put Mounds and Almond Joy in the same category. Okay. Almond Joy slash Mounds, um, Reese's Take Five. Oh, that's a good one. And 100 Grand. Do they still make 100 Grand? Um, That one's okay. But yeah, I think they still make it. Also, say, can we just give a random shout out to, um, is it Sixlets? I used are to you talking about Chicklets? I thought it was Sixlets. Chicklets? They're like the tiny, tiny little candy balls that are chocolate. It has a candy shell, but chocolate in the middle. And I they come no in like idea. a little rope. And you only ever see them on Halloween. Are you talking about Halloween. nerds ropes? No. It's sixlets is what they're called. They're like multicolored. They have like a candy sugar shell. And like they're very tiny. And they have like chocolate on the inside. And they're usually like like in a like rope. Not attached together, but they're like in a, like a packaging. And the, the only time you ever see them is Halloween. Oh, I know what you're talking and about. And I, I loved that candy growing up. I hated bubble gum. Like any, my sister loved bubble gum. So we would always like swap out candy after like trick or treating. Uh, but yeah, Sixlets, that's a. Like you don't a, like bubble gum at all? Big League Chew, Double Bubble, Bazooka? No, because it only lasts for like two seconds, the flavor. And then, it, then you're just like chewing on rubber and it's not very good. How long do you chew your Kit Kats that it is an enjoyable experience? Well, it has better flavor, I guess. Okay. I don't know. I like chocolate. Okay. <laughs> like, and it sucks too because I bought candy at Target for us to have this weekend. And I specifically bought you Almond Joy because I know how much you like it. I do love Almond and, Joy. And um, I was trying to find a, a normal candy bag. And it's always like 
every single mixed variety pack of candy has like two really, really good candies and then like trash candy with it. Like, it'll always be like, oh, you've got Twix and Snickers, but then here's also Hershey's mini bars. And, and like, Mr. Good Bar. And you're just like, oh, I don't want this. <laughs> or it'll be like, yeah, it'll, I don't know. There's always like something gross in it. And you're just like, oh, I just want like these things. And I managed to find a pack of just Kit Kats in peanut butter cups. And See, to me, sugar me is sugar. <laughs> like, I will, I have a huge sweet tooth. No, I think... I will eat any. I think I can't eat like plain Hershey's. That's gross. They're like, their cookies and cream is good, but they're plain. Oh, I do like that. That's really good. I used to love Three Musketeers. I still do really like Three Musketeers. Like that's the bottom tier of the chocolate candy is Three three Musketeers. Musketeers. Yeah. Are you out of your mind? No. Like it's definitely Kit Kat and Twix are up there, then Snickers, and then like goes Over Milky Way? Oh, gosh, that's Milky another Way weird Midnight? one. Oh, no. Yeah. You like the weird ones. How is Milky Way Midnight weird? It's dark I chocolate. I had a sophisticated palate at the age of eight. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, so we've obviously eaten a lot of candy this weekend. We haven't even talked about Butterfingers. Those are actually pretty good. I I'll, love Butterfingers. I'll give that one a slide. That one's That one's good. Give it a slide. Like, I feel like... Well, it's so honored to have earned your approval. Are you out of... <laughs> like... I mean, they're all chocolate, so I, I'll eat it, but I don't know. It's just it's just not Twix and, like, Kit Rate Kat. the Starburst flavors from best to worst. Your best is, like, pink, isn't it? Uh, It goes red, pink, <laughs> yellow, orange. And that is, like, a universal ranking. I would say I'm a citrus flavor, so I think yellow, orange, red, than pink. You grow more disturbing <laughs> by the day. Says the guy who loves dots. When I met this man, um, he talked about how he would make a dot Super Bowl, where he would mush all of the dots together and eat them at the same time. Um, and almost choked, I believe, when you did that. Um, yeah, so... You know, yeah. um, not all heroes wear capes, Catherine. <laughs> okay. Um, We're a house divided when it comes to candy. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, did we have any candy in Uganda or Kenya? Um, I, I don't think so. I can't remember, actually. Maybe we did because I bought a bunch of like snacks at the Antebe airport. We were waiting to board the flight to Kenya. Oh, yeah. I did not have any of those. Yeah. I think you were you weren't feeling so great. Um, I was going to say I had the fun sort of candy that are charcoal tablets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Christopher got a bit of food poisoning or something. Something happened. But um, like, no, I bought a bunch of like goodies and stuff. But I don't think it was like Ugandan specific candy. Yeah. But they did have, like, potato chips. So I like to try different snacks wherever I go. At the risk of calling... Like plantain chips and stuff. At the risk of calling my candy opinions further into question, I legitimately enjoyed the flavor of those charcoal tablets. Just get out of here. I did. Get out of here. I have no idea. <laughs> um, all right. We may have had candy. We may not have. I don't quite remember. I don't either. Um... I liked the snacks that I bought at the airport. So. Good. Yeah. Um, do you have a highlight that you want to mention or do you just want to kind of pop into the episode here? Um, I'd say my highlight was Catherine Day. Um, Christopher, every once in a while, will just like block off a day on a weekend and be like, it's your day, which is really sweet. Um, and my day... I get to pick what I want to do and I wanted to do nothing. Um, I wanted to stay home and eat junk and watch um, Halloween and scary movies and different things like that. And that's what we did, which was a lot of fun. Um, So that was, that was a bit of a highlight for me is uh, Catherine Day. Yeah. One of the seven deadly sins, sloth. Um, I'm sorry. After go, go, going for the last month, it was so nice to just be at home. It was really nice. I was, <laughs> that is not what I was picturing when I put that on the calendar. I was like, you know what? <laughs> We're probably going to maybe like go for a nice walk outside because the weather's nice. And, um, there's a fantastic, um, 
there, there's a there's an exhibit at the art museum that is getting like rave reviews. So I bet like we'll go do that and then maybe like go out to dinner over over uh, on the east side. And then it was like, <laughs> feed me. <laughs> And I was like, whoa. I was, well, we ran in the morning and then it was like, I would like to be in my pajamas for the rest of the day and watch scary movies. There we go. Anyway. Fair enough. So now we're past Halloween because we're going to be in November by this time, by the time this comes in. But uh, what's your highlight before we dive in? Mine was a hike that I went on yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a favorite, not a favorite, because um, it's not my favorite trail in the park, but it is one that um, I rarely see anyone on and like it's just a nice place to like feel alone kind of like reconnect like all that kind of stuff I don't know just kind of like get lost in my own thoughts or what have you so I did that yesterday and it was really nice nice yeah. okay yeah all what right we're we talking about today today's episode we have we've talked um, more specifically about a lot of the things that we are going to talk about more generally today. Um, so if you're interested in like a deeper dive or more details or what have you, um, go check out the corresponding episodes. But today we are going to walk you through how to spend two weeks in Uganda and Kenya, mm-hmm. right? So this is um, Central slash Southeast Africa. Oh, it's that area is known as East Africa. East Africa? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, like I'm thinking yeah, like it's geographically, on the East, right? East African tourist visas, the visa that we got for it. That so, is true. Yeah. So I would say Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and Rwanda are sort of considered that East Africa part of Africa, but it is more like, yeah, it's like around the equator, which I know you hate how I say the equator. Um, <laughs> how do you say it? Equator. Equator. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so Eastern yeah. Africa. Yeah. Um, and we're just going to kind of walk you through the exact itinerary that we took. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe talk about some things that we would change or where we would like maybe cut out something if if you feel as though it's too rushed. But this is really a, a starting point for you to plan your itinerary um, to this amazing part of the world. Yeah, and I will first give a quick shout out to Go to Africa. That is who we booked our trip through. Um, they helped me and, you know, Christopher came at me with like, this is what I want to do. And then I was like, cool, I'll talk to these people um, at Go to Africa. And they were amazing. And they helped craft this wonderful itinerary and plan it all for us. That was a very violent way to put it. I'm sorry. What Christopher they- came at me and said, this is what I want to do. Well, no, I was... <laughs> And that's exactly how it happened. Christopher politely approached me one evening and was like, "No, gorillas? <laughs> Pretty much. And I was like, all right, well, I'm not just going to go all the way there for three days and turn around and come back. So let's find other things to do. Um, and that's when we did more research. And you learned about the chimp trekking. Um, I wanted to go to the Maasai Mara and find cheetahs and et cetera, et cetera. And we built this itinerary with the help of Go to Africa and their expertise as well. So Shout out to them. That's we uh, planned it all through. Um, So, yeah. Go ahead and kick us off. Day one. All right. Day zero slash one is basically getting to Antebe because it's a a journey. Uh, In Uganda. uh, Yeah, in Uganda. So that is um, the city with the main international airport in uh, Uganda. And it is a hike to get there. There are no direct flights from the United States to Antebe. So... You got to go somewhere. And for us, uh, we had the experience of flying Brussels Airlines <laughs> um, all the way. Um, you know, we flew into Brussels and then from there flew down to Antebe with a technical stop in, was it Kigali? No, 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 no Burundi. Yes. Yes. Correct. Um, Bujumbura. Bujumbura. Yes. And this same flight will either go through Kigali or something. There's always pretty much a technical stop on the way to Antebe. In Uganda, if you're flying Brussels Airlines, um, yeah, don't recommend Brussels Airlines. <laughs> the seats were very wow. small. I mean, they were very small. The seats were like much smaller than even other airlines we've flown going to like Europe and, you know, other places. But I don't know. The flights were tiny. They barely fed us or gave us water <laughs> like the whole time. That was my main issue. Right. Like, yes, they barely fed us. They gave us like most most food that you get on a like a long flight, and this is a thirteen hour flight from Brussels all the way down to Antebe. Um, 
most of the time you would get like, you know, some sort of pasta or entree or, you know, main meal. You get a salad, you get a roll, maybe some cheese, a little dessert. Like there's like quite a bit that would hold you over until the next time you eat like eight to nine hours later. Um, for, um, t- for Brussels Airlines, I think all we got was like a tiny little thing of pasta and a roll and they're like we'll see you in 10 hours and then we got like the tiniest tiniest like hot pocket like sausage roll thing or whatever i was so hungry like an hour before we landed and that's all the food we got and we were so hungry when we finally got there thank goodness though that they played the safety video at least three times (laughs) guys google the safety video for brussels airlines it will forever haunt my dreams yes um (laughs) Um, but yeah, day zero to one, you said fly to Entebbe. Yeah, essentially day one was just getting there. Uh, we got in really late at night. Where got, did we stay? Uh, we checked into the Bama Hotel and we got a big brief rundown of all the things we were going to be doing. Um, and then we fell asleep at like two in the morning. Yeah. And that leads us into day two. Day two, we we honestly just hung out at the hotel. This was really, really nice. We slept until 1030. Yes, because... We missed breakfast, which we, was yeah. pointed out to us. <laughs> we were told, like, oh, breakfast is from 7 to 10 a.m. And, like, Chris and I were like, oh, should we set an alarm so we can, like, get to breakfast? And we were like, oh, no, we'll be up before 0% that. Zero percent And then we woke up at 10.30 and we're like, whoops. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we had a very relaxing day. I mean, we we ended up having lunch. Mm-hmm. Um, we had some nice coffee like both some morning and some afternoon coffee we the coffee just in this area of the world is just incredible very delicious (laughs) and then we really just hung out by the pool neither of us went swimming um but we just we just kind of soaked up some rays and really relaxed because we knew that this was going to be an active trip we purposefully built in a kind of a buffer slash relaxation day Mm -hmm. which was fantastic. I mean, it was very slow paced. We had a leisurely lunch. We had a leisurely happy hour. We had a leisurely dinner. It was very nice. Yeah. And, and just like Christopher said, uh, we had originally, we weren't going to have this day. And then we ended up building this day in just to have a buffer day after all the craziness of travel over the summer. We were just nervous if something got pushed back, if we got delayed, um, it was nice to just sort of have a buffer day and we were tired and jet lagged and wanted to wake up on uh, Uganda time. So we, yeah, we didn't do anything, but you can, if you're there, you can rent a bike and go, you know, to the botanical gardens, or we had the option to book like a, a evening sunset, sunset cruise, cruise yeah. on Lake Victoria. Um, we had talked about it. We were just tired and really just wanted to like beat the jet lag and feel rested for the rest of the trip. So we just sort of chilled that day. Which yeah. Was nice. And I feel like um I feel like just kind of the more we travel, the more or the less we try to do everything mm-hmm. and the more we kind of focus on like okay, why did we choose to come to this part of the world? Mm-hmm. We chose it for this this and this, right? So like we are not going to try to like schedule things or cram things in that could jeopardize us. Um, experiencing like the primary reason that we're traveling somewhere. Mm-hmm. So that is, uh, that's the reason that we kind of built in this buffer day. Um, but yeah, day two, very relaxing. Day three? Day three, we are off to Bowindi. Um, so we took the, like we flew from Antebe to Kahihi. Like 45 minute flight. It was pretty, it was pretty quick. It was gorgeous. Yeah. And we land and our driver was like, Hey, um, I saw tree climbing lions in the, um, in Queen Elizabeth national park, not too far from here. Cause the airport that you land in is sort of halfway between Queen Elizabeth national park and Bowindi. Um, and he was like, do you guys want to go check it out? And we, we were like, sure. Uh, so we did like a short little drive through Queen Elizabeth national park, saw some of the tree climbing lions in the fig trees. Um, and saw some elephants and buffalo. And then from there, we took the, how long of a drive was it? Maybe an hour, hour and a half? I would say hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, to Mahogany Springs Lodge in um, Bahama, in the Bahama sector of Bowindi Impenetrable National Park. Um, and, you know, it takes it takes time to get places, um, you know, when you're on a trip like this, just between the flying and the driving and all of that, um, that we got in sort of late afternoon and we just kind of hung out at the lodge, um, settled in 
enjoyed the views. Uh, we also had a beautiful, beautiful, I think it's a banda is kind of the housing is what that is called, but absolutely beautiful. Um, we hung out there. We go to the, um, to the main lodge and had some great views there. We saw the cats. We saw Billy and the two kittens um, and I hung out with them. But for the most part, it was just kind of a chill day. Um, I promise this itinerary gets more exciting <laughs> as this goes on than just like flying and hanging out. Um, but yeah, so this was more of a transportation day, uh, which is important to build in during your time in East Africa because there can be quite long transportation days to get places. So that's basically what day three is. Uh, what is day four? Day four is when the action starts. Um, we had a pretty full day here. We we got up early for a forest walk in Bawindi. Mm -hmm. um, I would highly recommend doing this mm -hmm. for two reasons. Number one, you get to see three separate waterfalls, all of which are beautiful, right? And it's a nice way if you do it before the gorilla trek to kind of get acquainted, learn a little bit more about Bawindi. Um, see some some monkeys. We saw monkeys on the uh, on the hike, but also mm -hmm. there is a chance for a bonus gorilla sighting. We did not have a bonus gorilla sighting. They did the day before on this hike. They did the day after on this hike. They did not on our day. So now I know, just as like I'm mapping out wildlife, um, gorillas are like bears for Catherine. Unless it is a purposeful thing that we are hiking to see, we are not going to see them if she is with you. Okay. If, if you guys have not been longtime listeners of the podcast, Chris says that I, like, deter bears somehow. You I have are a never, bear curse. I have literally never seen a bear in the wild. We have gone to Shenandoah. We have gone to the Great Smoky Mountains. We have gone to Glacier National Park. And we have seen zero bears every time. If we went to Katmai for the salmon run... <laughs> I guarantee you that if you were there, they would not see bears. Fat Bear Week would not exist if you were looking for them. Um, but anyway, the Bowindi Forest Walk was beautiful. It really was. Um, not terribly challenging. There were a few um, steep uphills, but it was just the two of us. And then it was two um, younger children, one of which was like six or seven, one of which was 10 or 11. So, And, and everyone was very... Um, very, very easily handling the terrain. So not yeah. anything that's terribly technical. And it was a guided technical. walk too. Yeah, which yeah. was which was really nice. But yeah, um, the two boys, they were brothers and they were they were quite entertaining. They were a blast. Yeah. We bonded. <laughs> um, but after that, uh, we went back and we had lunch at Mahogany Springs. And then we opted to do a, uh, a village tour and visit the Batwa tribe. Mm -hmm. Really neat experience. It really, really was. I mean, we we got to see um, just so much. I mean, uh, we we had coffee that was yeah. um, that was uh, ground and roasted and everything right there. Um, we we had a traditional bread that the name is escaping me right now, but we yeah. we made it. Right, like yeah, we were... I want to say it's made from cassava flour and millet flour. Yes, and millet flour. I remember. We both got to try grinding millet with two stones, which is actually it was not. It was kind of fun because then there's a song and yeah, it was it was a good time. We, we tried... put Chris to work. <laughs> yeah. We tried um, the banana gin. Mm -hmm. Very good. We um, we just got to like chat and learn more about like the history of the area, the history of the tribe. Really, really neat. I would highly, highly recommend doing that if uh, if you are in the area. And then at the end of that, we walked to a, um, I don't want to call it a store. Um, a It was an organization. An organization, the, thank yeah, you. The yeah, the Ride for a Woman. Yes. They, yes. they had a, a retail um, component to it. Yeah. But Ride for a Woman is an organization... Um, that, that employs women that have gone through um, rather troubling circumstances. Yeah. And they teach them um, different forms of artwork. So right now in our place, we have a basket um, hanging both from the Batwa tribe as well as one that we bought from Ride for Women. Um, just stunning. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful. Yeah. Um, and you get to see them making it right in front of you. Well, right? and their artwork was just... I mean... Like, 
I like both. Both of the bowls are absolutely beautiful, but the one from Ride for a Ride for a Woman was like so perfectly intricate. Oh my gosh, yes. Like the detail is insane and it's beautiful. Um both of the bowls are beautiful, but yeah, yeah. that was uh that was really cool to see. Very yeah. special. Um but yeah, that was that was day 4. Um a lot of these places we will say um just so that we don't like keep repeating the same thing. Um a lot of the time breakfast, lunch and dinner are at the um the lodge itself. If not, they are packing you like a brown bag or something like that to take on the road, but um it's not like you're you're going down the road to um like find like a local cafe or like something like that. A lot of the the meals are included. Mm-hmm. Um so so they do provide those. Um but yeah, that is uh day, yeah. that was day four. Um day five, right? The big reason why we were coming to Uganda, as I think a lot of people are probably coming to Uganda for the gorilla trek. And so we were staying in the Bahama sector of the park, but we didn't realize at the time how our I guess our gorilla trekking got booked or whatever the permit but we were booked for the Ruhija sector of the park which I'm actually glad that we got to do because um we hiked in the Bahama sector when we did the waterfall hike the day previous or the previous day so it was kind of nice to check out another section of the park and we also got to check out one of the coolest families of gorillas uh the Mukiza family which is full of little babies which are the most entertaining thing to to see when you're gorilla trekking Um, because the adults kind of just like sit there and eat and hang out and like the babies are just climbing and running around and and going nuts as children do. (laughs) Yeah, It's like all animals. Um, We joked that um, all of the animals with children we saw on this trip look just as exhausted as humans with children (laughs) on this trip, (laughs) Um, which was very evident during the gorilla trek as well. But um, yes, so we hiked for about two hours each way and then you have a full hour with the gorillas to to take photos and video and just observe them um it was really cool to watch um we talk all about that on the gorilla trekking um podcast episode but so many great memories the kid the babies were climbing all over the trees um one of the babies was pounding his chest and the silverback literally just knocks the tree over and you see the baby just kind of slowly falling to the ground like from the tree and yeah it was just very very fun um and it was definitely it's definitely an adventure it's definitely treacherous at times with the climbing on tree roots because you are going for the most part you are kind of macheting through the woods or behind the guide who is macheting through the woods um, to get to them. So that's definitely an adventure all on its own. Absolutely. And just from an itinerary perspective, I'm glad that it was our last day in Bawindi. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad that we had that experience the last day because I almost feel like if we had it flipped, right? Like, so the gorilla trek is before the forest walk and, and everything else. Mm-hmm. That's such a high right? That it's like, it's one of those experiences where it's really, really hard to compare it to, to something else. So it was nice to end on that and be like, okay, that's the last kind of memory we're having of that area. Um, definitely go listen to the, the episode, um, that we recorded all about gorilla trekking in Uganda. Yeah. And, and after that we got, um, a free massage as well that was like included in our package or whatever, which was fantastic. Yes. And I think I went first, right? And she asked me like, how like hard do you want the massage? And I'm always like, I like a good deep tissue. So I'm like, go, go in. And, um, I don't think she asked you that. I wonder if I was speaking for the both of us because you said it was quite painful and I was just like, yeah, this is great. (laughs) Yes. Um, yeah. It was, it was a lot. Um, I am, I am a little wuss when it comes to massages. Oh my gosh. He's like, it's really funny. It is. uh, I like, like if a fly lands on me, that's a little too much pressure. Um, The amount of times that you'll ask me to give you a massage and like, I start like actually giving you a normal back massage and you're like, ow, this is too much. You know, I really thought that the um, that the massage on our honeymoon 
in Siem Reap would have just like <laughs> destroyed any sort of nerves I have in my back and really, uh, really gotten me. Well, she really got in there. She was like elbowing between your shoulder blades and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, unfortunately, that uh, that tolerance has not stuck with me. But um, <laughs> but yeah, gorilla trekking was fantastic. I will ask you a question here. Okay. The one day with the, the forest walk, um, the tribe visit, and then ride for women. Would you, if you could go back, would you do a gorilla trek back to back? Um, I would, but I that Man, was that is a hefty price tag, isn't it? It is because it's it's seven hundred dollars per person for one hour with the gorillas. So if you're going to do that two days in a row, that is fourteen hundred dollars per person. I mean, not that's including with, tipping. I was going to say with tips, you're probably easily looking at three thousand dollars in two days. Yeah, yeah, just one hundred percent. Just to be upfront. Yeah, yeah, for two people. Um, so obviously that wasn't really in our budget. Um, but if money was not an object, I think I would have done two days. I would have done the harder hike the first day and done an easier hike the second day. Like if it was like, oh, it's only 30 minutes to go and then like 30 minutes back, I would have done that. But it was kind of, it was challenging. It was. It was very challenging. The one we went on. Just the the steepness of the hills, how slick it was, all of that stuff. It was was a bit of a challenge. Yeah. But but it was nice. Yeah. Would you go two days in a row? You know, I struggle with that. Um, I would love to have that experience two days in a row, but... I also feel like the one day was just such an incredible experience mm-hmm. um, that if I were to visit two separate families, I would also, I mean, it's just, I mean, like my personal nature to compare, right? And be like, okay, well, which one was better? Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Um, I'm happy with how we did it. Okay. I will say that. Um, but at the same time, I would never pass up the opportunity to uh to spend another hour with the gorillas yeah um, i get it but yeah day six day six driving from bawindi to queen elizabeth national park um like you said earlier it takes a while to get to places yeah. right it's not paved roads it's not uh it's not some of those uh 70 mile per hour speed limits that we are used to here with uh with interstates yeah. um incredibly scenic beautiful view, lots of opportunities to uh, to spot wildlife on the way. I will say it was incredible to go from Bwindi, which is a rainforest, to the savanna of Queen Elizabeth National Park yes. within two hours. You're yes. in a completely different ecosystem. That was really cool. Very neat. Um, so we got in and then we had a game drive that evening. Mm-hmm. And Queen Elizabeth National Park does not have the big five. So if you are looking for the big five, um, this is not the, uh, the safari for you. Um, we, we talk about a comparison between Queen Elizabeth National Park, the Maasai Mara, and Kruger National Park in South Africa um, in another episode. So scroll back a few and, uh, and hit that one up um, where, where we talk all about the, the positives um, of each. But Queen Elizabeth National Park was stunningly gorgeous i mean um like a sight line for just as far as you could see um frequently seen multiple big five just by looking in one direction right well so not we multiple s- big five yeah elephants cape buffalo oh of the big five sorry so when you were saying before that they this isn't where you find the big five they have everything in the big five other than rhino i was gonna, yes yes exactly um and leopards are extremely rare to find we did not see leopard yeah so we, um, but we saw a ton of buffalo we saw lions um in the trees and uh lots of elephants yeah, yeah. and really um a lot of very pretty birds too a lot of hippos mm-hmm which which was something huge on my list, and boy, did this check it off. Mm-hmm. But yeah, a very nice evening game drive, and then a, a relaxing evening. Yeah, yeah. And even on the drive-in, we saw a rock python, which is crazy. Uh, they were like, yeah, that's pretty rare to see here. Or, you know, because they're, they're pretty stealthy, and they're not always out. It was 
massive. It was by the side of the road. And as soon as we like made any movement, it just flew. Like it was like, nope, bye. And like flew into like this little like roadside pond thing that was happening. Um, But yeah, that's day six. Day seven, we spent a full day in Queen Elizabeth National Park. We did two game drives. We did the morning and the afternoon. Um, that is where we saw hippos out of water. We saw Henry, the, uh, the residential hippo at a Shasha wilderness camp, which is where we stayed. Um, we saw hyenas, a bunch of them kind of fighting over with the vultures and all these other animals for their kill. Lots of birds, buffaloes, um, just huge, vast savanna full of lots of animals that we saw. Ugandan cob or cob, topies. Cob. Yes, I kept getting that wrong when we were there. I kept calling them cobs. Cobs and toppies. <laughs> Ugandan cobs and topies. Okay, I've got it. Um, so it was just a day full of a lot of game drives. But our lodge specifically was a lot of fun. Um, it was it's definitely one of the more rustic safari lodges we've been in. Huge. A lot of space. Uh, you have to order a bush shower, which... All you have to do is say, hey, like, I would like a shower. Can you just, like, heat up some water? And they'll bring it over, and you have five minutes at the most. Three minutes. Oh, it's three minutes to take a shower. Um, I ran Which out is, of hot I water. Which is, I mean, plenty of time. I ran out of water at one point. Christopher had to sacrifice some of his. Totally fine. That was a really cool experience. Um, our tent overlooked the river, and the tent was pretty much, like, screen, other than, like, I think right where it hits your waist then it's canvas and they just put curtains around it at night um to kind of block out any of the light and stuff and I did not sleep well the first night because I heard hyenas and buffalo and all sorts of things outside of the tent and I'm like all they have between me and them is the screen that is it (laughs) I'll be honest I loved it I did not sleep well the second night it was better but the first night I was like I was up most of the night (laughs) I straight up loved it like it was, it was just fantastic. Like there's nothing quite like waking up to the grunt of something that you have no idea what it is and you're not going to turn on the light. Um, well, yeah, because if you turn on the light, all the, all the like tiny bugs yeah. start gathering around it. So you're like in the dark and you're like, please don't, don't eat me. Yeah. So you're like, <laughs> huh, that was weird. And then in the morning you go out and you just see like one of the biggest piles of you know what like what six feet from your front door literally in front of our patio yeah and i was like pile i was like oh man something was there yeah yeah, and it's awesome something big was there i love it (laughs) i love it um but yeah an adventurous day seven yes and our in the lodge was great too because they had this beautiful sandy sitting area right next to the river that you could grab cocktails and sit out and hang out at and we spent both nights hanging around by the fire pit down there um, and just chatting with other guests and hanging out. And it was fun. It was very nice. Yeah. But anyway, day eight. <clears throat> day eight was traveling to Kabale National Park mm-hmm. um, via the Kasese Airstrip. Again, travel day, um, but also an incredibly picturesque drive. Like that yeah. is one thing, right? Is that. You're going to land. It's going to take you probably an hour to get anywhere, um, at least an hour to get anywhere. But it is incredibly scenic, right? It's not like driving on an interstate here through like, um, I don't know, where we are in Ohio, the endless cornfields where you're just oh looking gosh. and looking and looking, right? 71 south from Cleveland to Cincinnati is the, it's such a flat drive and there's nothing to look at the entire way except for the brief pass through columbus on the way down it's tough being Um, long distance for our first year of our relationship where you lived in cleveland and i was in cincinnati we made that drive all the time and it was it it never it never you never get used to it it's it's just boring (laughs) yeah that's fair um but yeah it these drives are not that um they have crater lakes we stopped at some crater lakes on the way to our lodge like banana Um, farm Oh my gosh, just everything. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Do not sleep through part of it, right, Catherine? I'm a big nap taker. I love a good nap, a leisurely afternoon nap. In fact, yesterday I accidentally took a three-hour long nap while Christopher was going on a hike, and I 
woke up I think I fell asleep at two o'clock I woke up at five and I was like why didn't you wake me because he was already home at that point and he was like oh I didn't want to disturb you or whatever you were sleeping so soundly not only home I was I fixed, you had been home I fixed a blind I fixed the bathroom sink that is maybe like what 12 feet from you where you were sleeping I didn't I was completely out. You like were out. I was out. I did not sleep well Saturday night. So uh, like I just took like a very long nap on Sunday and I yeah. just <laughs> Um speaking but of anyway, naps though, we... I passed out on the way um Yeah. So I missed some of the beautiful scenic views that you're talking about and because that's I okay. fell asleep. That's okay and... because and that's okay because I mean, our very first day in Kabali, we also took a very nice nap. But it was it was a different environment, right? Like we we had a um, kind of like a day bed out on a balcony and we fell asleep and I mean monkeys all around birds all around and it's just butterflies butterflies the it's amount just of a butterflies was insane yeah yeah so once again very nice I mean just kind of like hung out at the lodge for the day relaxed um and geared up for a uh, a big day nine. So day nine, the big day, we're heading to Kabale National Park for the big chimpanzee trek. Um, Kabale National Park is the primate capital of the world. It has 13 species of primates, um, nine of which are active during the day and four are nocturnal. But to start our day, we got up early and did the Bogoti Wetlands Tour, where we saw several types of monkeys. Um, including both black and white colobus and red colobus monkeys. Um, and there were some other monkeys that we saw too that the names are escaping me. Um, we saw lots of different monkeys while we were there, a gigantic spider, um, just all sorts of things. And it was a very beautiful walk, a guided walk um, that morning. And then in the afternoon, we got to do the chimp trek, which we have an episode about that as well that you can guys can go check out to learn more. And it was just, in, it was incredible. I mean, it's, it doesn't last as long as a gorilla trek. Um, most people tend to do the, the chimp trek, then do the gorilla trek. I'm actually glad we did it the opposite way because we sort of got the harder thing, the harder sort of trek done and we got to do the easier trek. I agree. And I'm going to just clarify one thing. Um, you get to spend an hour with the chimpanzees, just like you get to spend an hour with the gorillas. The reason yes. it doesn't take as long for the chimpanzees is that it does not take as long to find them. Yes. Well, they're also in bigger families. They're up yes. to like 120, 130 members in a family. And they're not all together, like on top of each other. Um, there's a quite a big area of land that they are. And they have trackers that go out again and kind of tell you where they're at. Um, so it's not quite as challenging. It's also flat, like pretty flat in the area. So it's pretty easy to find them. So you don't have to go up and down mountains to, to find the, like, like you do with the gorillas. Um, it was incredible. They're also a little bit more lax about the one hour requirement, but we were also staying there to help other people find them um, later on. So we got to spend quite a bit of time with the chimps. They were so they were so fascinating. That is our closest relative um, by DNA. And they they were just incredible to see. We saw tons. Yeah. Both in the trees. And um, there was a few on the ground. We mostly saw them in the trees because it did rain. But beautiful. It's an incredible experience. Day and 10. That was the big that was the big thing we did. Yeah. Day 10. Um, flying to the Mara in Kenya. Yes. So that concludes our Uganda itinerary. Yes, portion. we are. We are heading to Kenya. This was the day of never ending flights. This was also the day that I acquired a, uh, a taste for charcoal tablets. Um, <laughs> but it was wonderful. Again, like not to not to repeat myself here, but an absolutely stunning flight. Like sit by the window, look out and you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff. Which every seat is has great views because you're on a 12-seater tiny bush plane the yes. entire time. <laughs> exactly. So we we flew to the Mara. Um, I think it took us, I don't know how many, over 10 touchdowns and landings. Nine touchdowns I think and it landings? was nine touchdowns and landings because we were flying from Kabale and it made a few stops because a lot of these bush planes sort of, 
feel like buses in the fact that they will stop in various places. So we had about three stops. Not even buses, but like a, a ride share because they yeah. were like, hey, do you mind if we take a two minute flight over to this airstrip? And we're like, ah, you know what? At this point, let's go for it. That was that was when we got to Kenya. But no, go, flying from um, Kabale to Antebe took three takeoffs and landings uh, yes. to get there. And then we got to Entebbe. We had a bit of a delay because our original flight was delayed. Um, then we get there and it's several, several flights to get to uh, the Maasai Mara because we flew over Lake Victoria, which was stunning. Beautiful. And then we get to Kisumu Airport where we have to go through customs and security because they don't have that in the Maasai Mara. All of us get off the plane, go through that, get back on our plane. And then there's multiple stops before we get to our stop um, in the Maasai Mara. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then once we did land in the Mara, we went on a little game drive that evening, had a, a wonderful sundowner by the, um, by the fire at our lodge. Um, and we, sh- uh, we, <laughs> we stayed at Il Kiliani, um, tented camp and a wonderful dinner. Um, but that was really just kind of like making our way to the airstrip, making our way to the lodge, enjoying the lodge, going to bed because we had a big day on day 11. Yes. Um, day 10 was a transportation day, but it was a day that we sort of had a game drive on the way in. And that's where we saw cheetahs or cheetah. Oh, yeah. I didn't I did not mention any. Um, I did not mention any of the specific animals that we saw. Yeah. But cheetah we was saw, the big one. Cheetah was the big one. Yes. Yes. All right, day 11 is, this may have been my favorite day, I think, of the trip. Um, We get up very, very, very early, and we do a hot air balloon over the Maasai Mara, which 100% it's worth it. It is not cheap to do, but oh my goodness, I can't even tell you how many times I kept like telling Christopher, look how cool this is. This is so cool. This is so cool. This is so neat. Can we give a ballpark figure just for like usefulness? Like the cost? Yeah. Or the amount of times I was saying, oh my goodness, this is so cool. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, <laughs> no, I was thinking cost. I believe it was about... It was 4 a person. Yes. Yes. Um, it does include, like, they have like a champagne breakfast spread after, but... It is not a champagne breakfast. Can I say that? What do you mean? It was not champagne. Well, okay. It was sparkling a sparkling wine, wine breakfast. A Prosecco breakfast, if you will. Um, okay, Christopher, but you're, I think in the air for about 45 minutes, such a cool experience to do our first hot air balloon ride. We saw a cheetah, we saw a lioness, we saw a herd of zebra that we flew maybe three meters or 12 feet above, which was crazy. Um, wildebeest, elephants, giraffes, like we saw so much from the air and it was so beautiful. We also were watching the sunrise, uh, from the air as well, which was really neat. Um, after we did the hot air balloon safari, we came back. I got the best massage of my life. Shout out to Halima at Il Kiliani camp. Um, and we had lunch and then we went on an evening game drive, which I'll let you talk about. Cause I think you really, really enjoyed this evening game drive. Yeah. I think that this had the best sighting that I have ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the absolute highlight was a leopard with a kill, with with a mongoose kill, um, who had to fend off two jackals that were trying to steal her kill, who had to fend off a lioness that was trying to steal her kill by climbing up in a tree, taking the kill up in the tree. Um, the lioness got frustrated. The lioness like kind of turned her attention to these jackals, but they were, I mean, it, it was not going to end well. Um, so then she started just like getting really... Um, flustered and got like way too close probably a little too confident for being a soul lioness towards a herd of elephants the elephants start trumpeting like then she gets really flustered and goes back to the leopard to try and get the mongoose kill like all over a mongoose right this is i know we're like the juice is not worth the squeeze here exactly move on (laughs) this is not a gigantic kill for a lion but it was just so cool to see the interaction between so many different animals. Um, it is honestly something I will never forget. Yeah. So day 11, um, yeah, hot air balloon ride and the game drive in the evening, which was the coolest game drive I think we've ever had. 
And then day 12 is our last full day in the Maasai Mara. We did a game drive in the morning and our goal was to try to find a rhino. Uh, we were unsuccessful, but we did have a bush breakfast and saw a ton of hippos. Um, we also saw a lot of lions and things like that. And in the evening, um, we did a game drive and a sundowner, which was an awesome experience as we were drinking a beer and watching Um we saw some zebras, we saw giraffes, we saw warthogs, just all sorts of animals in the background as we're sipping our beers. Hyena. Hyena, whole bunch. And we were watching the sunset, so it was really, really, really lovely. But yeah, day 12 was just essentially two game drives, you know, one in the morning and the afternoon and just kind of enjoying the lodge. I believe we also um, had monkeys that were hanging out at our at our tent as we're trying to get in, uh, which is always very funny. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much what we did on day 12 was game drives. Yeah. Yeah. And then 13 and 14, you're flying home. At yeah. least if you live where we live in North America. Um, yes. It's a long trip home. Yes. That's why I think two weeks is kind of your best bet if you're going that far away because they are some long flights. If you had to, so first off, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. If someone is thinking of of a 10 day trip, how are you making that work? (laughs) North Africa, go to Morocco or Egypt. No, I'm saying this itinerary, 10 (laughs) day trip. Um, Oh gosh. I mean, I guess I would just do Uganda and come home. Okay. Or I would skip Queen Elizabeth National Park and just do the gorillas, the chimps, and Maasai Mara. That's what I was thinking is yeah. like just looking at 1 through 14 here, you're going to be skipping Queen Elizabeth and you're also going to be skipping the Bawindi Forest Walk. Mm-hmm. And you're probably going to be taking an early flight to Kabale so that you can do an afternoon chimp trek. And then heading out the very next day. Like it is going to be rushed. I wholeheartedly agree with you that if you want to do the Uganda Kenya experience, you're going to be um, looking for a two week time frame. Yeah, just to make both work. Otherwise, I would choose just Uganda for 10 days um, and then, or like just doing the gorilla trek and the Maasai Mara or something like that. Sure. Versus trying to make it all fit. But two weeks really makes it worth it because it is a trek to get there and back. Even the fastest way that we could do it, um, which was flying through Europe, because I think we flew Nairobi to um, London, London to Philly, and then Philly to home. And that just took, like we got home the next day in the evening. Um, So it just takes time to get places. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That is our itinerary. Is there anything that you wish we would have done that we hadn't done? Who? You know, that's a good question. Um, I don't think so. Okay. I think that... I think that this was just a really solid trip start to finish. Like, I'm, I'm like looking at this, right? And I'm like, oh, could we have done two gorilla tracks? Sure. But then you miss out on like other experiences, Mm -hmm. right? And um, I don't think there's anything that we didn't get to do that I'm like, oh man, I really need to go back for this. I would go back for a gorilla trek in a heartbeat. I would go back to the Maasai Mara in a heartbeat. But it's not because I didn't get to do something there. It's because I want to have that experience again. That's true. Um, I think Murchison Falls would have been really neat to see. I agree. Or with Jinja, that. like the source of the Nile. Sure. And Jinja is kind of the, it's the adventure capital of Uganda, so there's lots of really neat adventurous things to do there: whitewater rafting, bungee jumping, canoeing, or kayaking. Um, it's just like a neat area. Um, there's also a lodge that's sort of in the middle, like an island in the middle of the Nile, that you can stay in, which looked really cool. Um. But yeah, I think between Jinja and like Murchison Falls, where Murchison Falls is essentially this tiny, narrow, not tiny, tiny, but like a pretty narrow path where the Nile River has to push through and it makes a very, very powerful waterfall coming through. And I think that would have been neat to see. And that area also is a national park that you can like see the big five in, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, 
that's our two week trip um, that we went to Uganda and Kenya. And we have lots of episodes about visiting Queen Elizabeth National Park, about chimp trekking, about gorilla trekking, um, comparing Kruger National Park in South Africa, the Maasai Mara in Kenya, and Queen Elizabeth National Park in Uganda. So lots of episodes you guys could go back and check out. As well as a full episode on the Maasai Mara itself. Yes. Yeah, a whole episode about the Maasai Mara. So let us know your thoughts. Have you guys been to this part of the world? Would you guys like to go? You can always reach out to us on Twitter at WW Honeymoon, Instagram at Worldwide Honeymoon, or email cat at WorldwideHoneymoon.com. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to rate and review our podcast. It takes less than a few minutes and really helps other people find us. Also, if you're enjoying this awesome free information on both the blog and podcast, when you're booking your next trip, head over to WorldwideHoneymoon.com slash resources and use the links provided. We earn a small commission at no cost to you when you book through these links, and these are all brands and companies we know, love, and use, like Skyscanner for finding the best flight prices, World Nomads for the best travel insurance, TripAdvisor for hotel bookings and reviews, and even Amazon for all of your travel purchases. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Wherever you are, wherever you go, remember to make every day a worldwide honeymoon.